Hi, I'm Dimitri from Book Widgets, and in this video tutorial, I will show you how to create interactive exercises with Book Widgets in Moodle. So if you're watching this uh, video, I assume that you're already using the Moodle LMS and that you're maybe uh, looking for a tool or a way to create and add interactive exercises into Moodle to follow up uh, the students' results and maybe even track uh, students live while they are uh, doing the online exercises. If that's the case, you're at the right place, so watch along and, and discover book widgets. So for, for those who don't know book widgets yet, um, I'll present it uh, very quickly and then I'll move on to, to Moodle to show you the integration. Book widgets is a content creation and evaluation tool for teachers and it will help you to support students throughout their uh, full learning process from beginning to the end, so from the creation of the exercises um, with the live monitoring and, and then the, the last step being the reporting, the grading and of course also sending back feedback to students. So that's, that's it in a, in a very short uh, summary. You have the four key elements here uh, which I kind of already mentioned but just to, to give you the full uh, explanation. Book widgets allows you to create many different kinds of exercises. There's uh, a widget library with over 40 types of exercises, so it allows you to, to change, to vary in, in, in terms of uh, the exercises that you're using and creating. It's integrated in the most used uh, LMSs, and of course in this video I'll show you how to use it within Moodle. It's, it's a full integration, so um, it's, it's very smooth and it will allow you to to keep using the existing Moodle accounts, students will make the exercises without uh, having to leave Moodle, without having to uh, log in with, with different um, email addresses and passwords. It's all linked to Moodle. As I mentioned, you can follow students live while they're doing the activity. I will do a quick demo later in this video and uh, you'll be able to grade the results of your students in a very efficient way. So let's go to Moodle right away. Here I'm logged in to Moodle as a teacher and I have access to one Moodle course. So let's go into that Moodle course right away. And you're already seeing something related to book widgets here in the middle. It's the results part. We're getting back to this later. So um, that's for a later part in this video. For now, I want to create a new exercise and share it with my students. So what I have to do is enable the edit mode in the top right corner, and then I can start adding activities or resources wherever I want. So let's say in topic two, which of course I can change the name of, um, but let's say I want to add an activity here. And then you see that within my library of activities, I have book widgets, and book widgets results, more on that later, but book widgets is the one that we need now. You might not have it av available right away within your Moodle LMS, so uh, if that's the case, if you're not seeing book widgets here, you will have to ask your Moodle admin to enable it. We have a tutorial, there's a few steps that the admin needs to take, they need to do it only once, um, but there's a few steps, and one of the steps is also that they need to send an email to us to get some Credentials, it's all explained very well in a tutorial that we'll mention in the description of this video. So once it's here, uh, added by the admin, you'll always have it here and you'll be able to click on it to add a book widgets activity within your um, activity or your exercise in, uh, in the Moodle platform. And then once you're setting it up, you can select content. And this is where the magic happens. Now I have my book widgets account within the Moodle LMS. So you see, this is my account. I've already created a few widgets as we call them. So all the interactive exercises, quizzes, or um, any other type of interactive exercise that you create with book widgets, we call it a widget. So you see that I've created some before. I could share them with my students here by choosing them or start creating a new widget. And then there is this full library. And before I deep, 
um, dive deeper into this, I will show you some examples. This will give you a better idea of the possibilities of the, the exercises that you can create with book widgets. So in summary, as I've mentioned, there's over 40 different templates that allow you to create quizzes, timelines, split worksheets, you name it, and probably book widget has it. And within those quizzes and worksheets, uh, there's also 36 different question types, as you will see in, uh, in my examples. And it's even possible to upload your existing materials uh, with the importer. Now, to show you some examples, um, I'll start with maybe with the quiz, uh, which is the third one here in the list. And uh, in the quiz, you, as a student, uh, the student goes each time to the next question by clicking on, on the arrows in the corners on the bottom or by using the arrow key on, on their keyboard. And as you see, they can um, use, uh, or the teacher can, can add multiple choice questions, questions with images, open-ended questions, drag and drop images in the right order, fill in the blanks, fill in the table, true or false, and so on. There's really a lot of possibilities with these uh, 35 plus question types. And I have one example here that has, um, it's a worksheet and it has for each question type that exists uh, an example. So as you see, you can, you can easily embed YouTube videos and then here there's multiple choice questions, open-ended questions, fill in the blanks with or without a drag drop, uh, a drop down menu. Here students need to find the adjectives, indicate them in red and the animals in green. So it's very interesting for language. I, I haven't mentioned yet, but book widgets is a tool that can be used for any kind of uh, course. Um, so languages, math, science, for any level. And it's also a tool that works on any kind of device because it's fully uh, web-based. You see there's fill in the tables, true or false question, uh, multiple answer table questions, annotate picture, I'm not gonna present all of them. I'll try to keep it short in this video, but as I scroll through the worksheet, you see some of the possibilities. I will scroll down till the end because um, I just mentioned that it's an interesting tool also for language teachers and uh, for math teachers. And to prove you that, um, I will go a little bit down in my worksheet. As you see, many, many different question types. And there's even question types for math and science teachers. Here's an example for um, chemistry, chemistry courses. And then we, we go down to the math questions with um, here, they need to give a fraction, um, but there's uh, matrix questions and there's even the equation questions where students have um, different mathematical characters allowing them to, to answer these questions. Now here there's quite few of them, but there's much more possible. It all depends on the settings um, that the teacher chooses to show more or less of, of these math mathematical uh, characters to the students. And then to finish, you can even create um, a rubrics question table. So a lot of possibilities um, with these different question types. And then one of my favorite widgets is the split worksheet because uh, it allows you to create this kind of reading comprehension activity where students no longer need, need to download the PDF and open it in a new tab. They have the PDF here on the right side and the questions on the left side. So it's very easy, very practical. They can read and answer the questions at the same time. And this example is with a PDF, but it could be a website embedded here. It could be a video embedded here on the right side and then having the questions on the other side. It could be basically any kind of document. So it, it, it gives you a lot of possibilities. I'm, I say document, but it can be online tools as well. Um, for math teachers, there's uh, tools like GeoGebra, GeoGebra and other tools that you can embed here and then have your student answer some questions on the other side. 
There's exit slips, crossword puzzles, um, mind maps, memory games or pair matching games like this one. This one is for younger learners. They need to listen and then match. Um, I'm wearing headphones, so you're probably not going to hear when I'm listening. But I definitely heard no's, so students can match. Uh, this is for younger learners or for language learners studying the parts of the body in English. So there's some gamification with all these widgets in orange. Um, you can create flashcards, you can create a hotspot image, and so on. The possibilities are endless. On our website, we have examples for each widget type. So if you're looking for something and you're unsure how exactly it works or how it looks like, make sure to go to our website and, and have a look at this um, widget library with examples that we have there. So just a quick reminder, um, how did I get here? I went to Moodle, I went into Moodle into a course as a teacher, I switched on the editing mode and then I added an activity and I chose book widgets and then I clicked on this select content button and as I mentioned, I could select one of my previously created widgets or start creating a new widget here. That's what I'm going to do today to show you how it works. So once again, here you have the full uh, 30 plus different widget types of which you have seen some examples now. Um, so hotspot image before and after widget is, is a very nice one too. For math teachers, we have some uh, interesting math tools here, but in the quiz and in the worksheet, there are also um, math question types. So let's create a worksheet today. Uh, before I dive into it, just a quick word on the two icons that you're seeing for some of the widgets. If it has this check mark, it means the widget supports submission. So it means students will be able to send results to the teacher. Teacher will be able to grade, even though a lot of it is graded uh, automatically. And of course, the teacher will be able to send back the feedback and the grades, talking about the grades, they are synchronized with the gradebook within Moodle. And the camera um, indicates that the live monitoring is supported for this widget type, which I'm also going to show you. So let's create a worksheet which has both of these um, features available. And now I'm in the widget editor. I'm still inside Moodle, but um, in this pop-up window, I'm inside my editor, which allows me to create my worksheet. And one of the most important tips that I'm going to give you is uh, when creating a widget, any kind of widget, uh, they all have a very similar widget editor like this one, always work from top to bottom in the menu on the left side so that you will not skip any important steps. So I'm gonna do it as well. I start with the widget name, which my students will see as well. And today I'm creating a widget a worksheet on Europe, on the European countries. So. I've chosen my widget name. Working from top to bottom, the next step is the About tab. Uh, here I have kind of a personal notepad where I can write notes which will not be visible for students, only to widget editors. I'm not using it today, but you could write some personal notes here. Moving to the next step, the question parts. Um, here I'll be able to add questions. And by clicking on add question, you'll see the 36 different question types, uh, which you have seen uh, at least some of them in the examples with multiple choice questions, open-ended questions, fill in the blank questions, drag and drop questions, tables, question tables, annotate picture, and so on. And at the bottom of the, at the, bottom of the list, you'll find the math and science question and the rubric question being the very last one. Let's start with a text multiple choice question. Uh, careful, be careful. There are two types of multiple choice question. The second one has multiple correct answers. In, in my question, there's only one. So I'll, I'll choose the first one here because my question is what is the capital of uh, Belgium? And the possible answers are Paris, Berlin, Brussels or Amsterdam and the correct answer is Brussels so by checking the correct answer um, I'll be uh, of course
course, uh, the, the, the exercise will be auto-graded. So, of course, always a good idea to do it. Now, here I'm in the widget editor. Um, but what will this question look like for my students? That's my second uh, important tip that I'm going to give you is uh, to use the preview button on the top right corner. And I personally, I use it all the time when I create a widget. It's very easy to check if everything looks correct and to go back to your widget. Uh, so here I have my first question. Everything is, is, is looking nice. Um, and I can easily go back by clicking on the cross here next to the print uh, button. So back in this widget editor, I can move on. And if we work from top to bottom, you see there are some options. Uh, now, for a new user, a new book widget user, sometimes it can be overwhelming because there are many options. So here I want to reassure you. Reassure you, um, There are many options, but in a lot of cases, the default settings are fine. There are some options that you're not always using or um, maybe never or only in very rare occasions. So don't be bothered too much by, by all the options. They give you a lot of possibilities, but you don't always need them. Here I could have the answers in a random order. I could choose a multi-column layout. I could add a rationale, which is an explanation that students see after submitting the answers. I could add a hint. I could add an audio, which I could upload or even record here uh, inside Book Widget itself. I'm not doing any of these now, but it is, it is all possible. I could add images and I could change uh, the grades. That's an important one. Um, so here this question is word one point. You can change if needed. All right, let's add another question and i always like to add the um, um, question where students need to match pictures and words now i'm scrolling i'm scrolling and i will find it here but the list of questions is uh, quite long so it can be interesting to to use the filter and if i look for the word match or matching i'll find these question types so for this question, I'll need the word picture match question because uh, my question is match the cities and the pictures. And I'm going to add some pairs by clicking on add. And let's start with Berlin in Germany and add an image. Now, anywhere in book widgets where you want to add an image, you always got these three possibilities. You can choose an image from your computer, you can upload an image from your Google Drive, or you can find an image online. And the third option is interesting, because as you see, it's very easy. There is this integrated um, widget library. And by looking for Berlin, maybe I'll take that one. So there you go. I don't need to go to Google, download an image, uh, upload it again, and so on. It's very smooth, very quick. I can do the same for Paris, find image online, Paris, and I'll get probably a picture of the Eiffel Tower. And what's even better is that this widget library is, uh, is it's called Pixabay. It's an image library with write-free images, so you'll not have any issues with um, the rights or, or copyrights uh, for these images. I'll add another one for Amsterdam. There you go. So also I'm not mixing up the um, pictures and uh, the words, because book widgets will do so automatically. Maybe I'll add the last one. Uh, I'll, add a, um, I'll do the opposite. I'll add an image for London. But I'm not going to put the word London. That way, I'll have five um, pictures and only four words, making it a bit harder for my students because there's one that they don't need to match. So here you go. As you see, students will be able to match. Uh, the images are automatically shown in a random order. They're a bit small, 
but students can always click on an image to, to see it uh, in big. So that worked very fine, very easy. They can match and uh, yeah, try to find the correct combinations. The options below are the same as uh, for the previous questions. So I'm not mentioning uh, them all again. Just so you know, for the grading here, it's one point for each pair that they will need to match. So this one is on four points. I could work with half points if needed. So um, by the way, it's explained. If I click on the information icon, it mentions it will be multiplied by the number of correctly filled in answers. Let's add uh, another question type. Um, fill in the blanks question. So my question is going to be kind of more instruction than actually a question. Um, I'm going to write filling, fill in the missing words. And then I'll copy paste a text. So here my students will have to fill in some words. And um, if you have been creating paper handouts until now, probably you have been doing this to create some gaps in your text. This is not what we're going to do in book widgets. We'll leave the word that students need to fill in, but we'll put it between brackets. I hope that's the correct English words. And if you don't know this, um, it's mentioned here. So that's a good thing for some question types. It can be a little bit more technical, but then in uh, most cases, there is some explanation in the interface itself. So it's, it's, it's explained here and also by clicking on the information icon. Surround words, you want to blank out with double angular brackets and you have an example here. So that's always uh, good to know. If you're still struggling, we have for each question type a YouTube video on our YouTube channel. And of course, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions. Once again, I can hit the preview button to have a quick look to check if everything looks right. And indeed here, students can fill in the missing word. I can take out some other words. Um, maybe here, one of the founding companies was Luxembourg. Now Luxembourg is um, with uh, a capital letter. Is it case sensitive? That's up to the teacher to choose. By default, it mentioned here, ignore case. So Luxembourg with a, a small L would be accepted as well. You can have some other options here uh, if needed. So it's up to the teacher. Now I'll take up some, take out some other words. And then uh, here, 19 countries. There we can have a little issue because students could also write 19 with numbers. Now, that's not a big issue because there's a solution using the double hashtags. You can have multiple correct answer. So students will write either 19 this way or this way, both will be accepted. Once again, it's explained by clicking on the information icon, you, you get um, further explanations. So that's a bit the ID. Normally, if you need to know something, it's explained in the interface. All right, I have my fill in the blank questions and I'll uh, maybe add an open-ended question to finish. Um, what's your favorite European country? What's its capital? And why is it your favorite? All right. Um, you could provide some keywords if you have an open-ended question, like if you're asking for a definition and there are certain keywords that need to be in there. In this case, it's a personal question. Each student will give a different answer. So I'm not um, using uh, any keywords. I'll have to grade this one manually. I can adapt the weight, I'll put it on three points. And now I have my four questions for a total of 12 points. I get the overview here. I can change the order if needed. It's not needed here. So um, 
I'm done for the questions. As I've mentioned, we're working from top to bottom. So as you see, we're not finished yet. I'll move down to reporting. And here, the most important option is enable submitting of answers. It's checked by default, and that's a good thing. If you would uncheck it, then students would not be able to submit answers to the teacher. They would be able to do the activity, the exercise, but uh, they will not be able to send this answers. You as a teacher would not receive the answers. I think in most cases you want to receive the answers, so make sure this one is checked. Um, there are some other options, but I'll stick to the, to the most important ones. I'm not going to present everything in detail. Same goes for the general tab. And here, once again, you could be overwhelmed as a new user by the number of options. Uh, once again, I'm saying you don't need all of them uh, every time. There's a lot of them that you will not be using if you're a language teacher. You're not going to use uh, the calculator very often, I assume. There is one part, though, that you need to check every time, and it's the very first one. It's important, the correction and scoring options, because here you define what will happen when a student is submitting right after submitting his answers. What's going to happen? And which one um, way of doing it, which I like doing a lot, is, is unchecking the second one. I'll explain you what happens. Imagine that my student has given the wrong answer for the first question. My student said um, the capital of Belgium is Paris, which of course is wrong. In this case, the student, after submitting, will see that his answer was wrong. They will not see which was the correct answer because maybe you're going to explain it the next day in class. Maybe you're sending back your own feedback. Maybe the student will have a second chance. You don't want to give any presents. They have to find out themselves. So that could be interesting. If they're working in class and it's a kind of formative evaluation and you want to give them immediate feedback, then it might be interesting to show the correct answers also uh, when, when they hadn't found the correct answer. Or you can um, uncheck both. Maybe if it's a homework, you want to avoid that students know the correct answers immediately and, and would share them with their classmates. So this is a very important one. I'm checking both of them again. But yeah, make sure for each of your widget to check and change if needed. So one same quiz or worksheet can be used in different ways by changing the settings. There are some other tools uh, or options like strict answering order. Uh, you can have a startup password. You can enable or disable spell check. I'm not going to present all of these here in this video. I'm trying to keep it a bit short, but feel free to try them out. And just to give you one example, if you're enabling the um, scratch pads and you choose the grid or the horizontal lines and you have no idea what it will look like, as always, hit the preview button and you will see that the students have a scratch pad here for each questions and in this case it's with uh, lines. So just change or play a little bit around with these settings and um, hit the preview button to check what it will look like. So I'll keep it there for the settings and the general tab, then you can change the language if needed. If you're a French teacher and you want to have everything in French, even the submit button and all the dialogues, you can change the language here. You can change the des designs. Most of it uh, will be done not here, but by hitting preview and then the design tab. But I'm not going um, to present this in detail in this video, but there are some ways to change the designs, even to add a background image so um, you can create very nice looking widget. This one might be a little bit basic, but sometimes basic is good um, for the students because they, they, their attention is, is not caught by any background image or, or anything else. So let's keep it this way and share it with my students because I'm done, I've done all the settings and I'm ready to share it with my students by hitting the choose button. It's processing the widget and it will get me back to Moodle where the activity name is the same as the widget name. I can still change it if needed. I can add a description. Um, I can write this is the homework or the assignment. 
about Europe or anything else, uh, you, you can write what you want in the description. And I'm not presenting all the um, options Moodle offers. I'm assuming that you know these options and that you know how to use them. I'm sticking to the, the, the main ones and how to share the widget. So I now hit one of the two blue buttons, save and return to course, which will get me back to my course. And as you see in topic two, I now have Europe the assignment. I can get out the, of the edit mode and this is basically what the student sees. And I can show you because I will move to a student account. Actually, I'm getting um, the student account on the left side and the teacher account on the right side. So the student on the left side is logged in and has access to this widget by clicking on the title within Moodle. And it mentioned your progress will be shared with your teacher. And that's the live mode that is um, available, which I'll show you. That's why I've put the student on the left side and the teacher on the right side. So the teacher can go back here. And now we go into this book widget results part. Once again, the book widget result part is something that is not uh, there by default, you have to put it there. You do it just once at the beginning. Um, it's in our tutorial. I'm not explaining in this video because I already have it. Um, but in our tutorial, it's explained step by step how to add it here. It's important to hide it for students because it's not relevant to them. It's only for the teacher. So here you will be able to grade student work later on. But what we're going to do now is follow up the student live by clicking on the camera icon on the top right corner. I'll go into my course and I'll see that for the Europe assignment, there has been some activity one minute ago. I click on the assignment. I make the teacher's view a little bit bigger because then we'll also see the individual questions. So. Sam's student is a student that you see on the left side, and Sam is going to start answering the questions. And for the first question, he clicks on an answer. Since it's the wrong answer for the teacher, immediately in the live view, it will show up in red. If the student changes his mind and chooses Brussels, you'll see that it switches to green. So. It's a really very useful tool for teacher to follow up if they're doing well and also if they're doing um, if, if they're working slowly or maybe some of the students are almost finished because here of course you see only one student but if there's many students you, you will see them uh, all in this overview. I actually have a second student account. It's not on screen it's on a, on a different screen. Um, so I will now go in with another student and you will see the student appear as well in the overview. Um, so there we have Sarah and Sarah is also working on the widget. Um, maybe she's going to make the same mistake for the first question and then you'll see the progress. Um, I'll switch again to Sam so you can follow with me um, while I'm doing the work as a student on the left side and we'll make some mistakes and have some correct answers as well. Um, because if I would have only correct answers, I would have nothing to grade afterwards. So here, uh, as you see, when it's partially correct, it's shown in orange and um, if I have everything right, it should be shown all in green. Um, Luxembourg with a small L without the capital should be working as well. Um, and then here it was 19, I think. And what I can also do as a teacher is click on the student name and I'll see what the student has already answered. 
NLC live uh, if they maybe change their mind for some question. You'll see live that it changes here, even the, the questions where they need to write. They write an answer, and as a teacher, you can follow up live. Now here, it's all good for this question, so it should show up in green, indeed, four out of four. Now, let's say that a student makes a typo. Of course, it's going to be considered as a wrong answer, but afterwards, I would be able to correct it, as I'll show you. Let's answer the last question as well. Um, so I've written an answer with some mistakes, of course, once again. Uh, if not, I'll not uh, have anything to, to create. Now, the student submits. As you see, no login needed. Uh, he doesn't need to write his name because he's logged into Moodle. That's very handy. All right, now, uh, several things are happening here. The student, because I checked those two options, sees where he made mistakes and which were the answers that he was supposed to give for each question. And on the teacher side, we see there's an envelope icon, which means that this student has submitted his answers. If some students are forgetting to submit their answers, you can submit the current student answers um, so that you will still be able to grade them. Now, I'll quickly also fill in some answers for Sarah, so we will have two student uh, works to grade. So there you go, both Sarah and Sam have uh, submitted their answers. Now, as a teacher, um, if you go back to your course, in this results uh, dashboard, you'll find these submissions. You can go to their class or uh, open recent submissions below where you'll find submissions for this um, assignment. I get a handy overview on the bottom where I see the grades from the auto grading, but of course they can still change when I'm going to do some manual grading. You can see them in percentages or in points. Now, if I'm grading, I can click on student name and I'll see exactly what this student has answered. So for, for the first question, well, it's quite logic, zero points because it was a wrong answer. Um, I can add some comments if needed. Um, not bad, but you should study this part again. It's maybe not the best comment, but just to give you an idea how to write feedback, you can do it for each individual question. There is an option to, to add feedback below the question. Um, even here, where Luxembourg without the capital L is, is considered correct, I can still add feedback. And anywhere where students need to write, I can do it this way. It's a bit like in a Google Doc or in a Word document where you add remarks. And for citizen, I have several options. I could consider this as a correct answer. In that case, a student, student gets four out of four points. Or I could leave it marked as incorrect and write, mind your spelling. But maybe give a half point, that's always possible. So mm, as a teacher, you, you always stay kind of the, the master of, of the game because there's an automatic grading, but you can still change. Uh, and then here, open-ended question, it's, it's similar. Um, there was probably a typo. And then um, 
yeah, there's uh, this one is just wrong, or I could strike true text, and, and the capital is not Namur, but Brussels. And maybe I'll give one and a half points out of three. And then the global grade will change. Before I think it was five, now it has become seven. And I can add a summarizing comment here on top, if needed. And then I could already send, return the, the grades or uh, even a PDF copy uh, to the student. Um, and then move to the next student and do the same thing here. But uh, you could also just grade them first, all of them, and then select the student works and send back the grades and the feedback here. Now, um, there's another way of grading. What I've just shown you is the first possibility, which is um, student by student. But often it's more interesting to work question by question. Already here, in this overview, I'm seeing that question three apparently was very easy for my students, and question one was more difficult. Of course, it's not very representative since I have only st two students, but it gives an idea if you have 20 students, you will have a very clear view on, on which questions were more difficult or more easy for your students. And if you click on the first question, you'll have an overview of all the answers on that first question. And what's interesting here is that you can hide correct answers with the filter, because normally you don't really need to have a look at them anymore. Um, now, in this case, they were all wrong, so I cannot really show you. But even more interesting is the group identical answers option. Here, my two students made the same mistakes, and actually this is basic knowledge. Knowledge, I'm writing a comment, some feedback, which I write only once. I don't need to copy paste because both students will get this um, feedback on their feedback PDF, which they will receive. And I can move on to the next question and, and do the same thing. So that's a very efficient way, another way, but very efficient one uh, of grading. And then, as I mentioned, I can send back this feedback to the students. Now there's a few options to by configuring student feedback view, you can show the points or not showing the points, uh, showing which answers were correct or not, and so on. So once you're done grading and adding feedback, select all the works, all the assignments from the students, and you can return work, which will send back the grade to the LMS. Okay, so at the moment it is being sent. And you can return a PDF copy of the work which they will receive by email. So getting back to the student account, actually to the email account of this student, and here you'll see that uh, the student has received an email with an attachment, and the, attach the attachment is the PDF. And in this PDF, they will see all the feedback, all the grades, everything according to the settings, of course, that we've chosen. Uh, they will get all these uh, elements in, in their PDF feedback, of course, the remarks as well. So that's very useful. A student receives this feedback and, and can um, improve, of course, um, by learning from, from his mistakes. And even inside the Moodle course, when the student goes to grades, you'll find his grades for this uh, specific assignment inside the, the grade book, the students on the student side. And the teachers as well, of course, um, within this course, the teacher can go to the grades tab and find the grades for this student for this particular quiz here in the overview. So that was 
book widgets inside Moodle, the kind of quick tutorial, I've shown you the basics. There's a lot more that's possible, um, but we invite you to try it out. With these, this tutorial, you, you, you got the basic instructions and you should be able to find out um, about the other possibilities. Once again, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you're um, in need of any help. And what I also wanted to show you to finish is how you can find some uh, tutorials, some videos. So if you open or you go back to the editing mode and you add a new activity and you choose book widgets again and you select content, but instead of selecting actual content or creating a new widget, you click on this hamburger icon. Um, you'll find a menu here where you have a few interesting elements. If you click on support, you will find our email address. And if you click on tutorials, you'll find a link to our tutorials on our website. Here, if you go to LMS integrations, there you fi you'll find two tutorials on Moodle. The first one is basically um, what I've just shown you in this video. And the second one is the one that you might need to send to your admin uh, because it shows how to set up the integration of book widgets inside Moodle. There are other tutorials here. Uh, if you're a math teacher, go have a look here. And uh, if you're setting up a quiz or a split whiteboard or a web quest for the first time, have a look at these tutorials here. Then another interesting element is if you click on assistance and you click on webinars for some reason this is in french so let's go back to english here you'll find upcoming webinars and previous recorded webinars and there's a lot of them uh, to inspire you to learn you how maybe differentiate your lessons with book widgets how to create interactive learning paths and so on so a lot for you to explore maybe one very last um, before I finish, uh, you might have seen that here I have some extra elements in my menu that you might not have. These are groups. And these groups, you can create some of these to collaborate with your colleagues or you can find existing groups by clicking on My Groups and then Discover Groups. For example, if you're an English teacher, English, English language teacher, um, Sorry, teaching English is a public group where you'll find many uh, ready-made widgets. It's actually a community, people sharing their widgets here. You can become a member and share your own widgets inside this, this group. So make sure to have a look. Um, if you're looking for grammar activities, for example, you can look in the folder or use the search option if you want to do something on the past simple, you can have a look with the eye icon here. And if this, uh, in this exercise look interest interesting, I advise you to duplicate it to your own account, which still allows you to make some changes before sharing it with your student. So that's it. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to us. We also have a Facebook group called Teaching with Book Widgets and a Facebook page. That's just book widgets. So maybe see you there or in another video. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.